the magnetic gauss's law states that the divergence of the magnetic field is zero. In other words, there is no magnetic charges. The Ampere's law states that the curl of the magnetic field is proportional to the current density. If you need a refresher on these two Maxwell equations, please first check out our videos on Maxwell equations in the electromagnetic playlist. So, given only the magnetic Gauss's and Ampere's law, and without any new physics or assumptions, can you arrive at the well-known biot savarts law? The purpose of this video is to show how one can arrive at this result in just a few conceptually intuitive steps. Of course, we would need to rely on some well-known mathematical tricks in our toolbox. One of such mathematical tricks that is crucial for solving this problem is the idea that a vector field with zero divergence can always be expressed as the curl of a vector field. Thus, the magnetic field is also a curl field. In other words, the divergence of a curl field is always zero. The vector field A is called the magnetic vector potential. Check out this video in the electromagnetism playlist for more about curl field. We need to add one more trick into our toolbox, which is related to the concept of Green's function of a differential operator. Let's have a quick refresher on this topic. Given a linear differential operator in R here and denoted by L, there exists a function, which when operated on yields the Dirac delta function. We call this the Green's function of L. The Green's function is also called the impulse response function of the differential operator L. Let's now consider an arbitrary source term given by the function x and convolute it with the Dirac delta function over all space in the coordinate r prime. The Dirac function in the integrand then picks up the values of x at r. On the left side of the equation, the differential operator L, which acts on R, can be pulled out of the integral. Thus, the term in the square bracket is the response function to the applied source function X. We shall denote the response function as Y. In summary, the general response to a differential operator, here and denoted as Y, can be expressed as the convolution of the Green's function with the input function X where the Green's function is being defined as such. Great, we are now ready to solve the problem. As we shall show, the biot savarts law can be obtained from the two Maxwell equations in just a few simple conceptual steps. Let's go! A quick review of vector calculus is in order here. The Laplacian is a linear differential operator on a scalar field given as shown. The vector Laplacian, as its name implies, acts on a vector field instead. It takes the Laplacian on each component of the vector field. It is then straightforward to prove that the vector Laplacian, as defined, can also be expressed as follows. We are now ready to derive the analogous Poisson equation for the magnetic field. We begin with the definition of the vector Laplacian on our vector potential A. As previously mentioned, the fact that the magnetic field is divergent less allow us to write it as a curl field of a vector potential A. Ampere's law then allows us to relate the curl of B to the current density J. Without any loss of generality in terms of physics, one can impose the Coulomb gauge, allowing us to set the first term to zero. With this, we arrived at the so-called vector Poisson equation, which has the same Laplacian form as the Poisson equation for the electric case. However, the vector Poisson equation for magnetic case has three equations, one for each components of the vector potential A. Thus, we can arrive at the expression for the vector potential A if we know the Green's function of the linear operator, which in this case is just the Laplacian. By definition, the Green's function for the Laplacian is such that when operated upon, it yields the Dirac delta function. For the 3D Laplacian operator, the Green's function is well known and is given within the green bracket. 
It is given by 1 over the modulus of r minus r prime with a factor of 4 pi. The Green's function technique provides a very elegant way for writing down the solutions to the differential operator. We repeat here the key equations from the last chapter. The differential equation that we are interested in is the vector Poisson equation, where we have written it down component-wise. We also know the Green's function for our Laplacian operator. This allows us to write down the expression for the vector potential A in terms of the source function, which is the current density J. The magnetic vector potential can thus be expressed in terms of the current density vector. This is the well-known result for the vector potential in magnetostatics. Finally, the magnetic field can be obtained from the curl of the vector potential. To arrive at the final result, we need to take the curl in the integrand. Note that the curl is with respect to r and not r prime. This can be easily evaluated using the identity as shown, which we will provide a brief note at the end of the video. Thus, we obtain the well-known Biot-Sarvarge law in magnetostatics. For your reference, I include a brief note on the vector calculus identity, which we used in the previous slide. Feel free to pause the video here if you would like to inspect the math.